today we have sharing by Srija Didi, Srija Mathu Didi. Uh, Srija Mathu Didi, she is a professor in uh, computer science and engineering and also the head of the department of L&D in Godavari Institute of Engineering and Technology, Rajamundri, Andhra Pradesh. She attended her introductory USV FTP in September 2020 for the refresher one part one in April 2022 and refresher one part two in June 2022. And she has been a very active volunteer in activities of UHP in her college and in the uh, national level. She also co-facilitated in one three-day introductory workshop in August 2023. She also participates in the volunteering activities of PPI calling and video editing. Uh, she attends uh, the morning session consistently, asks so many questions. So with this brief introduction, I welcome Sujadidi for her sharing in the morning session. Didi, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Bhia. Namaste, Sharmila Didi, Sunil Bhia, and all other co-explorers. I am Dr. Srija Madhu, working as professor and head in of LND department at Guy Rajmandri. Already Bhaiya has given my introduction. I'll add to it. At home, we are four members. I, my husband, and our two kids. My elder son will be completing BTEC in cybersecurity this month. And he is doing internship at GMR Delhi. And younger one has written 12th exam and also appeared in J.E. Mains recently. My UHV journey started in 2020 with the introductory workshop. After attending first workshop itself, I was very excited and felt very happy that so many people are working for such a good cause. I was into spirituality since long as my mother runs a satsang group. But until I got to know about UHV, I felt that spirituality is different and education is different. It was a big ray of hope that uh, now I can have values with education. Then later, I did Refreshing Part 1 and 2 in 2022. But I could see the real progress only started after I joined the seventh batch of morning session. It's exactly one year now since I joined the seventh batch. It was last year in, uh, I think it started from March 31st, 2023. So from that time onwards till now, I'm regularly attending, only maybe sometimes I'll be missing the morning session. Otherwise, I'll be attending regularly. I'm able to see that the morning session is necessary for my progress. It is really helping me a lot in my self-exploration. Uh, for me, it is like a daily dose of understanding. It is something indispensable like air, food, water, what we take, I think this dose of understanding is also must. Coming to exercise one, observing self by self, it is a difficult task. Seeing body is easy as I can use my eyes, but for observing self, only the thoughts and imagination is there. In step one, I'm able to see my imagination, not always, only when I decide and I try to observe, I'm able to see it. Coming to step two and three, I can see that I'm in a state of harmony when the feelings are naturally acceptable to me. Step four and five, I decide which feelings I should have. The basis of my decision making is mostly precondition and assumptions. It is rarely based on right understanding. And I see that I get influenced by outside situations and assumptions also very easily. 
coming to step six and seven, I can see that the feeling of relationship is naturally acceptable to me and that it gives me happiness. But ensuring this every moment is somewhat difficult. Feeling of relationship and coexistence only ensures harmony in me. I can see that also. I can see that most of the time harmony is maintained, but not always. After getting all this information from UHV, I am now able to observe my thoughts. And whenever my harmony is disturbed, I am backtracking and checking the root cause of the disturbance. And what are the corrective measures that I could have taken to avoid it? I'm taking a look into that. And next time, if such a situation happens, then what should I do? It's really helping me. So if similar kind of situation happens, the previous experience is helping me and I'm finding myself in a better situation. One of the instances I would like to uh, tell about here, um, my maid while cleaning utensils, she leaves the tap open. I Earlier I used to get annoyed and I scold her for wasting water. I explained her many times that if the water goes into the drainage, it's of no use for anyone. And if it is there in the tank, someone may be able to use it. Uh, she looked very astonishingly at me and she used to say, okay, only you say such kind of things. Nobody, I do the same thing in all houses, but nobody will uh, say such kind of things. I thought maybe I am wrong. And I just thought about it. And I uh, thought about the total situation and then with the feeling of relationship, I thought if I am getting annoyed with her, I am getting disturbed. Uh, so I thought somehow I have to come into a feeling of relationship with her. I need her anyhow. And I don't want water also to be wasted. So now next, uh, next time what I did is when she left the tap open, I just went to her and looked at her and smiled when the tap was left open. She immediately closed the tap. Then I laughingly said to her, you will never change. But the reply she gave was more uh, uh, surprising for me. She replied that I have changed a lot. You are not able to see. See, I have closed the tap. So I thought maybe uh, she has developed more understanding than me. Uh, I thought ki maybe she is not understanding, but uh, she has understood and she was able to show it to me. So this was one of the instances. Uh, next, coming to exercise two, observing self and body. Before UHV, I had some idea about soul and body, but seeing self and body as two units and understanding them on the basis of needs, um, activities, responses, etc. started now only. Thinking about self and body, everything seems to be like a miracle. How self enters the body and the life starts. When self leaves the body, it's the end of life. So how powerful is the self? Uh, thinking about it itself, I feel it's so amazing. I'm able to observe self and body as two realities only when I try to observe. Else I consider myself as a body only. Self is giving instruction and reading the sensations from the body. Decision maker is self. Body gives different sensations, but self decides which to read. 
this I'm able to see this in my uh, daily activities. I am at a distance from sensation and I am reading the sensation. These things also many times I am able to observe. Interaction is by sensation and I am giving meaning to these sensations. That is also visible. Uh, I'll uh, tell about an example recently that happened in class. When I was in class, I gave some work to all the students. After completing the task, I asked them to show it to me. I found that many students were calling. Uh, I could hear them, I could see them calling me. So all this information I was able to get through my sensations, but myself, I was able to understand that I cannot respond to all of them at the same time. Then I decided to respond to one by one. So that decision also came at random. Uh, I responded to one student, just first initially I said, Ki, I cannot respond to all at the same time. So I'll respond to each of you one by one. So this is what I told to all the students. So now there I saw that self decided how it has to handle that particular situation. Now from eyes and ear, it got the information, but it was the decision of self, ki what should be the next action? What should be done in that particular situation? So then, I responded to each one of them one by one. So here I could see that many informations my body may give to myself. But it is the self which decides how to respond to it. I can see that my reactions are mostly based on assumptions, preconditionings, etc., Whenever reaction comes, I can see I am able to find out ki why it happened. So mostly it is based on preconditions and assumptions. And response will be there when I have right understanding based on natural acceptance. And now I am able to understand that right understanding is the base for everything. Solution for any kind of problem can be got through right understanding. And problems are basically existing because of lack of right understanding. So in one of the sessions, I remember uh, Sharmala Didi gave an example of a pothole on the road. Didi said that when we see a pothole on road, we don't stand and question who did it, why it is here on my way and likewise. Uh, that example uh, gave me a very good understanding of how I should face problems without getting disturbed. Just working to find an alternative path would be enough. So that is, uh, in a general way, we keep doing. We don't stand and ask questions when we see a pot pothole. Same thing we can follow in our life also. Hurdles may come, problems may come, but... A simple thought there to find an alternate path would be enough for us to handle that situation. So I tried to apply this and many times I'm able to succeed with this particular understanding. Coexistence of self and body is visible, but role of space is not much clear to me. Internal research is in progress. That's what I should say here. I'm trying to work on it. And I'm able to see that now the journey is towards inside. Before the kind of research we did in PhD and all, we were working on things outside. Now the thing is we have to work on ourselves. So coming to happiness is my innate nature. I understand this, but I find myself becoming dependent on external factors for my happiness, like good food, good words, favorable sensation from others, 
All these things make me happy. I'm able to see that. I understand that continuous happiness from outside or physical things cannot be ensured. Anything from outside can give me only temporary happiness. My expectation from others and outside world is making me unhappy. That also I'm, I'm able to see. I mean, I'm working on it. Most of the times I'm comfortable. Discomfort and disharmony is very less. All the credit goes to UHV, I should say. Disharmony mostly comes when outcomes don't match my expectations. I, in every situation, I'll make, I'll have some expectations that the outcome should be like this. And if I, if the outcome doesn't meet my expectations, uh, I'm getting disharmony. But it also has reduced. I, I'm trying to less make less my expectations itself, so that I don't land into disharmony. I'm making now programs where I can ensure my happiness without depending on anything from outside. So this is what I'm doing. And all this is based on the information that I have got from UHV. Coming to the commitment, I'm involved in PPI calling and video editing. I attend morning meeting for two hours. I attend weekly and monthly meetings also. I'm also attending team development meetings. I have shared UHV content with UHV2 content with one batch of my students in uh, last semester. And in the next semester, again, uh, I'm, I may be taking up that again. So I also shared content with first year students in SIP program. I'm committed to spend daily morning two hours and some extra hours also for volunteering activities and meetings. I find a lot of positive vibrations, all good things being discussed in our morning session. It is, I should say it is just like a UHV satsang for me. I find it very fulfilling and I feel that no other gathering seems to be so enriching for me. I don't find any other way better than UHV to start my day. Thanks to UHV, thanks to all who made it possible. I extend my sincere gratitude to Kumar Bhaiya, Sharmila Didi and all co-explorers. Thank you to one and all. Namaste to all. Thank you, Bhaiya. Yeah, thank you, Sri Didi, for that simplified crisp and sincere sharing. So uh, we have been asking many questions also in the morning sessions. All those questions are enriching to all of us. Many times we can see that the questions are of uh, ours also. And I remember you also asked questions in the face-to-face -face workshop uh, when we conducted it over the your institution. So we have completed USP introductory, USP uh, refresher one, part one, part two, etc. And uh, uh, in the team development meetings also, your questions were very much uh, enriching and that was helping all of us to move forward uh, in our self-exploration. Thank you, Didi, for sharing. Let me request uh, Shamla Didi to give her comments and remarks regarding the sharing. Shamla Didi, over to you. Namaste, Shri Jaji. Namaste, Didi. Namaste. Very nice to hear your sharing today. Um, in a short span of time, uh, you have been able to do quite a bit. Um, you are into a lot of volunteering activities. You, I guess, had some of it already in you. Um, like you mentioned, you were on a spiritual quest from before. I guess the environmental conditions also, the family support may have been there also. Your own sanskar, many things. Uh, probably. And of course, when you get some information, that also works like a trigger. But ultimately, it is your own self-exploration that uh, you know, drives your um, 
competence or your um, your perspective about things in life. <coughs> so in that sense, I would have to say that you know both things, um, the information you got, but that by itself, of course, we can see is not enough. It triggered some self exploration in you. And your own self-exploration has led you forward in a very nice manner that you're able to not only improve your competence, but you're also trying to help improve the competence of others. So that's very nice. Um, few things that uh, caught my attention, which I just wanted to point out for um, everybody. And there were a couple of questions also. So, uh, just wanted to mention something. Uh, when we talk about, you know, um, there was a question about self entering the body. Um, specifically, you said that when self enters the body, life starts. And when it leaves the body, it is the end of life. So in fact, if we see the self is life, I would say. I am that self. I am the one that is enlivening the body. Right? A lot of times our, um, as you mentioned, you know, our assumptions are very deep rooted. So we tend to identify with the body. And so it seems like when there is birth, life is starting. When there is death, life ends. But in fact, what we call life, that is a, you know, something that is enlivening the body. So um, this is one thing that I wanted to mention. Also, a couple of things, other things. Um, you mentioned about, you know, when there is a problem, to look at alternate paths to the problem. So many a times, if we don't have clarity about the whole picture, when we go to sort out one problem by doing something else, we may create a different problem in some other sphere, in some other domain. So like, you know, in the body, if we go to try to fix one organ, but we are not aware of the whole picture, then in trying to fix one order, uh, one organ, we may be creating problem in the other organ. Just as a simple example is, sometimes we take certain medications which may work to, you know, say, you know, there is a fever or something, and we take some medicine to bring the fever down. So the fever gets brought down, but it may create some other problem in another part of the body. Like it may not, that medicine may not be very good for the harmony of the kidney or whatever else. So in that sense, rather than looking at uh, trying to find a solution to a problem by using an alternate path, eventually what we need to all do is to look at the whole picture, understand the whole picture, and then it becomes clearer to us what our role is or how to go about it. And what we consider a problem may not actually be a problem outside. It may be a problem in my own perspective. That also is a possibility. So I just wanted to open that up for exploration of everybody. Um, the other thing about expectations, um, so rather than trying to lessen our expectations, see, we will always have that expectation. If I behave properly with somebody, I will have that expectation that the other will also behave properly with me. So I don't need to reduce the expectation, but what I can do is to have the right expectation. If I'm aware of the other's competence, then I will have the right expectation that, okay, their competence is lacking. Therefore, 
you know, I will see that this expectation from that person was beyond something that they can match. So something like that. So expectation is not an issue. Problem comes when we link our happiness with that expectation. So now yes, when I'm linking my happiness with that expectation, if the expectation is not met, I become unhappy. If the expectation is met, I am, you know, very happy, excited. So um, the important thing to see there is that my happiness is independent of my expectation from the outside. If I can keep these two separate and approach them as separate entities, then uh, that problem uh, dissolves. That was one thing I wanted to say. Okay. And not just for you, I was just mentioning for everyone. Um, also about feeling of relationship. You know, a lot of back and forth happened about um, in the house with the people that we are surrounded with. So if we have a feeling of relationship, if we can see the relationship with the person at any moment, we have feeling of relationship for them. If at any moment we are not seeing that feeling of relationship, we will not have you know, if I don't see the relationship at any point, I will not have the feeling of relationship at that point. So the important thing to see here is that ultimately we'll all be able to see this, that as units, we already are related to one another, regardless of whether I need somebody or I don't need somebody, whether it is part of the group of people that I am working with or it is somebody outside of that group, whether it is my family or whether it is another person's family. Ultimately, we'll see that the relationship is already there. I just need to see it. So the moment I see it, I will have feeling of relationship, regardless of whether I need to get some work done from somebody or, you know, what I'm trying to say is feeling of relationship can be independent of our need or want from somebody or something. That point I just wanted to mention. So uh, these are just some things that I that caught my attention. So I thought I'll mention them. But I really appreciate how um, you have grown in this short span of time, and you have been able to. Um, not only work on your own competence, but also do all these volunteering activities. And I think, you know, it is very clear to me that um, you are committed to this path. And you mentioned also so many changes within you that you are much more calm, you are more comfortable, you are experimenting with many things. And I think that is the way to grow, to keep exploring, Till we are all coming up, building our competence. And in that process, while we are doing that, we are also trying to handhold with others and helping them build their competence, like you are trying to do with all uh, people that are around you and the work in your college. So many possibilities are there in the college also. And I think uh, as we go, we will expect a lot more from you. So all the very best in all your future endeavors also. Thank you, Didi. All uh, your comments are really helping me. And surely I'll mm, work on all these. A long way to go. So much work has to be done. Bit by bit, I'm trying. And uh, re morning sessions are really helpful. So if I keep connected with it, and so I'm able to mm, try those things bit by bit. Maybe everything together, it's not possible. But at least I'll catch hold of something uh, which I'll try to work on. Yes. So that's yes. how it is going. Yes. Uh, in fact, you know, um, there may be many things that you said, you know, long way to go. 
but i would say you have come a long way also like you were mentioning earlier we used to not think about you know whether did i react did i respond those kind of questions never arose we were just yes. unaware of the self totally yes did but now at least that part you know that is a major shift and i think uh, you know congratulations are in order for that because that is something that uh, makes all the difference to be able to see that your harmony is your own responsibility and you can be in harmony even when things outside are not conducive that is a very big shift i think and uh, so you have come a long way also so all the best for your future journey also thank you didi thank you for the, all the help you and uh, kumar bhaiya are really working a lot for us and i think better service to the society humanity uh, other than this is not possible you both are really really commendable the work is commendable i should say thank you very much didi we are all gaining from this whole thing we are building our own competence as well as it is helping others so it is a case of mutual fulfillment i would say so all the best thank you didi thank you very much ji thank you so much shamla didi for those comments uh which are helping to all of us